to Dateline Polk with news about your county government. I'm your host, Leanne Thomas. Today, you'll learn about county commissioners' actions from the December 16th meeting. The board approved its 2015 legislative policy statement with potential issues where they will focus their lobbying efforts during the 2015 legislative session starting March 1st. Five items were unanimously agreed to. These items include, one, support of funding for alternative water supply initiatives. Number two, capping Medicaid costs to county governments. Number three, extending legislative authority to establish enterprise zones. Number four, to support funding for two Polk County livestock arenas. And number five, to update the Consultants Competitive Negotiations Act. A sixth item, to support Polk County's membership in the Tampa Bay Area Regional Transportation Authority was approved by a four to one vote with Commissioner Hall dissenting. A seventh item, to increase funding for health departments was added to the list of priorities with two dissenting commissioners, Dantzler and Lindsay. The board approved a renewal workers' compensation insurance policy with Midwest Employer Casualty Company with an estimated first-year premium of approximately $289,000. The board also approved a $300,000 transfer from the Stormwater Municipal Services Taxing Unit Fund reserves for capital expansion. Uh, basically, we had $300,000 budgeted for this year coming. Uh, to do an analysis of the water quality of the lakes in, in the county. And what we've done is we've selected 12 lakes countywide that were the highest priority to do further investigation to determine what can be done to improve water quality in those lakes. And this budget item requested an additional $300,000 to fund those 12 contracts, essentially, from our MSTU fund. The board approved the school board's ranking of potential sites for construction of a kindergarten through eighth grade school in northeast Polk County. The target location is the Highway 27 corridor north of Interstate 4. The proposed school will serve new students resulting from residential growth in the area and relieve overcrowding in surrounding schools and will open as early as the 2017 school year. The board approved a construction contract with Kaminga and Rudovitz Incorporated for the Lake Gwynn Surface Water Restoration Project along with a Community Investment Program amendment and reserve from transfer for approximately $2.1 million. This was for approval of the contract for construction of a 70-acre wetland system for the restoration of the wetlands on Lake Gwynn. Uh, it's a project that's been in the making for a half dozen years now. Uh, we got approval from the state for permitting of the restoration work back in 2009 and funding's been an issue ever since. Um, we were able to secure and get everything in place this past year so that we had a $585,000 grant from the State Department of Environmental Protection uh, for the restoration work. That coupled with a Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission grant of $150,000 uh, helped us match the water management district's amount of 600000 to come close enough to the $2 million cost of the project to get it done this year. The board also approved a construction contract for approximately $326,000 with Specialized Property Services Incorporated to renovate the Polk County Historic Center's exterior walls. This morning we uh, got approval from the board to uh, move forward with the project which is waterproofing the exterior of the historic courthouse or the history center as it's known now. The approximate value of the contract is around $310,000. The work will take uh, about 150 days and will start right after the first of the year. The board approved an agreement for approximately $150,000 with Jones Edmonds and Associates Incorporated for updates to the Southwest Regional Utility Service Area Master Plan. In other news, the board recognized three employees for their longtime service to Polk County. Deputy County Manager Leanne Thomas, that's me, was recognized for 25 years of service. Tammy Glazier with Facilities Management was recognized for 30 years of service 
and Belinda Goins with Land Development was recognized for 35 years of service. The board recognized Ulysses Johnson and James Watkins for their years of service to the Polk County Historical Commission. Good morning, I'm Murda Young, Historic Preservation Manager. It is my privilege this morning to attend the BOCC meeting to give honor and recognition to two very esteemed gentlemen for their service to the Polk County Historical Commission, James Watkins and Ulysses Johnson. Mr. Watkins brings just such important information to the county through his interest and connection to the Kathleen Area Historical Society. It has been an honor having him serve with us on the Polk County Historical Commission. Mr. Johnson served for many years on the Polk County Historical Commission and brings very valuable information to this commission through his interest and dedication to the Florence Villa area and having published a very beautiful collection of the history and the facts of the Florence Villa in 2010. Polk County is very fortunate through these gentlemen to have captured valuable and interesting information from our county's past. Florida Polytechnic University President Dr. Randy Avent thanked the board for its assistance with Ring Road. Uh, commissions had a very uh, big impact on getting the university up and going and uh, they've contributed in lots of different ways. They've advocated for the university. They've uh, provided moral support and also financial support. Uh, they recently made a last payment on one of the ring roads that go around the university and so we came to publicly thank them for everything that they've done for the university. Convening as a Northridge Community Redevelopment Agency, the board approved a consultant services agreement with Parsons Brinkerhoff Incorporated for the Ernie Caldwell Boulevard project phases 2B and 3. In public hearings, the board adopted an ordinance prohibiting excess noise in motor vehicles. Hello, County Commissioner John Hall, District 5. Now, today we had a vote on a uh, noise ordinance uh, and, and it passed unanimously, uh, unlike the first time that it was presented to the board. Today's vote on noise ordinance uh, made these um, violations, traffic violations, with fines. The first fine being $100, the second $250, and uh, the third and every subsequent fine uh, $500. Unlike the first ordinance that actually could have had uh, jail time up to 60 days uh, on the second violation. So uh, I think that we did a, a good thing today for the citizens of Polk County. I hope that we will see a reduction in the amount of noise that we come that, that we encounter from moving vehicles. Uh, when you stop at a red light and, you, and your windows are vibrating, uh, if a a law enforcement officer happens to be sitting there with you, they have the ability to stop and find those people. So I think that uh, we have done some uh, good work uh, with uh, Polk County's noise ordinance. We will review it after the first year. It'll come back, we'll get uh, all of the results and see if we have some uh, habitual offenders. And if we do, then we may want to modify the ordinance and put back in some uh, potential jail time. So I think right now uh, what you'll see is uh, more traffic stops and uh, less noise on our highways. It also approved a resolution providing notice of intent to utilize the uniform method of collection for non valorem assessments. And finally, the board adopted an ordinance increasing the yearly salary of the Polk County Commissioners as provided in the Polk County Charter. The 1.7% increase amounts to $702.59 increase per year per commissioner. Now let's go to Todd Vargo with the Planning Commission update. Hi, my name is Todd Vargo. I'm a senior planner with Polk County's Land Development Division. Here's a brief recap of the highlights from the December 3, 2014 Planning Commission meeting. Conditional Use 14-19 is a request for a construction aggregate processing and storage facility on 17 acres. The property is within the Industrial Future Land Use District on Prairie Mine Road just west of Mulberry. 
The Planning Commission voted six to nothing to approve the case. This case is being appealed by nearby residents and will be scheduled for a future Board of County Commissioners meeting. Conditional Use 14-24 is a request for a solar electric power generation facility on 69 acres. The property is within the Agricultural Residential Rural Future Land Use District and is located on the south side of West Bella Vista Street, just west of Sutton Road. This is going to be a similar facility to the one near Lakeland Linder Regional Airport built by Lakeland Electric. The Planning Commission voted six to nothing to approve the case. Finally, Comprehensive Plan Amendment 15B-01 is a request to change the future land use district from Residential Medium X to Employment Center X on 24 acres in the North Ridge Selected Area Plan. A selected area plan is a tool the county uses to promote or protect a resource or trait located in a specific area of the county. The Planning Commission voted six to nothing to recommend approval of the amendment. This case is scheduled to be heard by the Board of County Commissioners at their February 3, 2015 meeting to determine whether or not to transmit the case to the Department of Economic Opportunity for their review and comment. A final decision will be made at the April 17, 2015 meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. If you have questions about these or any other upcoming cases, please contact our planner on call at 863-534 6084. For Dateline Polk, I'm Todd Vargo, and now here's RJ Walters with the Roads Update. Thanks, Todd. I'll start off today's Roads Update by getting you up to speed on the highlights from our December 11th TPO board meeting. The Florida Department of Transportation released its latest update to its five-year work program, which shows where state funds are being invested in the transportation projects around Polk County from 2016 to 2020. An estimated $525 million will be put into the study, design, and construction of transportation projects in that time span. A few projects in the work program that might pique your interest include right-of-way acquisition for segments of the proposed Central Polk Parkway at State Road 540 to US 17 and from US 17 to Logistics Parkway, the design phase of the John Singletary Bridge replacement over the Peace River in Fort Meade, Intelligent transportation systems traffic operations improvements in downtown Lakeland to be implemented in 2017. A pedestrian overpass across the rail tracks at Kentucky Avenue in Lakeland. A pedestrian underpass at New York Avenue in Lakeland. The construction in 2018 of a four-lane bridge at the CSX Railroad on State Road 60 in Lake Wales. And the project development and environmental study for US 98 widening from four lanes to six lanes, from West Daughtry Road to West Socrum Loop Road, and from West Socrum Loop Road to State Road 471. These are just some of the funded projects in the newly approved FDOT work program, which can be found in its entirety on the TPO website at www.polktpo.com. The TPO board was also privileged at its meeting to hear a presentation from FDOT District 1 Secretary Billy Hathaway on the progress of the department's alert today Alive Tomorrow Bicycle Pedestrian Campaign. Hathaway is not only known for putting two feet to the pedal as often as he does one, he also recently garnered nationwide attention, being honored as one of Governing Magazine's Public Officials of the Year for his safety advocacy and education efforts. Hathaway discussed at the TPO board meeting how a culture of change is rippling through the state as traffic engineers focus on design, more complete streets that are tailored for more bike and pedestrian usage, while creating road diets that slow down average speeds near urban activity centers. Features such as modern roundabouts, raised crossings and medians, rumble strips, and pedestrian hybrid beacons at intersections are proven measures instituted by the Federal Highway Administration that are being implemented by FDOT. The continued development of the state's regional trail system is also having a positive impact in making Florida more pedestrian friendly. As Hathaway often says, safety doesn't happen by accident and his department continues to evaluate pedestrian and bicycle crash data and work with engineers and planners to develop safer transportation options. To see Hathaway's entire presentation, go to the PGTV website and watch the December 11th TPO board meeting. Now you get you up to date with road closings to watch for around Polk County as you come and go during the next week. Daytime closures include the I-4 State Road 559 interchange in Auburndale, 
where State Road 559 is being expanded from two lanes to four, from north of State Road 559 to the westbound entrance ramp to I-4. State Road 60 roadway and railroad crossing improvement projects from west of Diesel Road to east of County Road 555. Memorial Boulevard at North Brunel Parkway. US 92 at US 98. US 98 from County Road 540A to Winter Lake Road. US 27 north of the entrance to Camp Inn Resort. US 27 south of West Main Street. US 1792 at Kinney Harmon Road. State Road 544 from Brenton Manor Avenue to east of US 27. State Road 17 at Crystal Avenue in Lake Wales where crews are installing new rail signals. Wrecker Highway just north of Commercial Boulevard. State Road 17 Scenic Highway from south of Ray Martin Road, Passion Play Road to south of Mountain Lake Cutoff Road in Lake Wales. And State Road 17 from State Road 544 to Hinton Avenue in Haines City where northbound State Road 17 remains closed to all traffic along that stretch. There are a few local projects where crews will be burning the midnight oil as well, so be warned of nighttime delays in the following spots. On I-4 from County Road 557 to the Osceola County Line, US 98 from County Road 540A to Winter Lake Road, US 98 from Baker Drive to Norton Road, US 98 from Daughtry Road to West Socrum Loop Road, West Hall Road, US 27 in Davenport from Barry Road to US 192 where detours will be set up as follows this week. The US-192 eastbound ramp is closed to traffic traveling from southbound US-27. Signs directing southbound traffic to travel south on US-27, then make a U-turn at Polo Park Boulevard, then travel north on US-27, then exit to eastbound US-192. And likewise, the US-27 southbound ramp is closed to traffic traveling from westbound US-192. The detour signs direct westbound traffic to travel north on US-27, then make a U-turn at Kagan Crossings Boulevard, then travel south on US 27. And there's also nighttime construction on State Road 37 from County Road 548 to Carter Road. So that's the wrap on the construction rundown. And for regular or emergency roads updates, check out the Polk TPO on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. With information and updates on the Planning the Moose Polk, I'm RJ Walters. Well, this edition wraps up another year of Dateline Polk. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to join us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, January 6th. Thank you for watching this edition of Dateline Polk.